Hey guys, it's Mia here, and welcome back once again to another live video slash bookish video. Now, what am I sitting in front of? That is actually my bookshelf. This part of it isn't actually a bookshelf. It's an old entertainment system turned into a bookshelf because I needed more room for my books. So why the heck not? And for those of you wondering what this is about, it's a can turned into a speaker enhancer because my Bluetooth took a crap. So, with that out of the way, we are going to get into what I came to talk about today. But, before then, major spoilers for... If you have not read this book, Winter, and you have not seen my review on it, if you want to, go and read Winter by J.A. Martin. Go and watch my review of Winter, and then come back to this video, because there will be spoilers abound if you have not read Winter. So, spring, with the spoiler alert out of the way, and if you're still here, spring centers around Jenny Bloom, or her real name, Jenny Sanchez. Now, right off the bat, things that I can tell you about the book. Well, for one, you can see in winter, the cover isn't as damaged as in spring. I think they made the covers a little thicker, so in winter than they did in spring so that's why there's a little more damage to the cover but that's all right it shows it's been red which is a good thing as long as it's not super bad like after was. so um this story mainly centers around eric and jenny and a few of the friends that you'll meet along the way so i'm gonna try my best not to talk about a lot of them. Why does it only center mainly around Eric and Jenny? Well, that's simple, and it says it on the back. It's been a year since the seasons have last dealt with the Council of Ice. With Eric now possessing the Key of Clarity, which is the key you see him holding on the cover, and the Council of Ice now on the season side, Jenny feels like it's time for her and her siblings to finally get a break. When Ava and Mark are kidnapped, though, Jenny realizes that a break might be the last thing she gets. Now she and Eric, along with several friends they meet along the way, have to find the two missing seasons before it's too late. Good thing it's only Thanksgiving break. Yeah, you notice I said Thanksgiving break and not spring break because the author likes to do this peculiar thing where he sets the books in the opposite season. Winter is centered in the middle of July and spring is centered in Thanksgiving break, which is in the middle of autumn and vice versa. Autumn is centered in spring. Spring, summer is centered in winter. The author did that on purpose just to give everybody a headache. <laughs> just kidding. But anyway, some things I can tell you right off the bat is that the writing in this is a lot better. And not just in terms of the fact that he kind of slows down the action a bit and the story is a little more balanced, but the actual writing itself. Look in the look at the writing for winter. It's kind of chunky and it's spaced out a lot, especially when you get to the talking. It's big and spaced, which makes the book have to be a lot thicker than it should be. When in spring, it's nice and put together like a normal book. So right off the bat, the cover and the writing in it is a noticeable improvement. Well, noticeable difference. Now, what happens to kickstart their adventure, because I talked about what kickstarted Winter's adventure, is the four of the siblings, Jenny, Mark, Ava, and Eric, are all watching Jenny's dad's movie premiere at the movie theater because he's like an actor so they were watching his movie at the movie theater and Eric excuse me Eric and Mark are having a bit of a fight an argument 
Mark is getting on Eric's nerves and Eric storms out of the theater, understandably upset with what Mark is griping at him about. And Jenny, being the kind person she is, follows after Eric and says, will you please come back in the movie? I know that Mark is being a jerk, but this is my dad's movie and it's kind of important to me. And Eric's still upset, says, I don't know why he has to be a jerk and da 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 and just normal sibling drama, siblings fight, that happens. Because siblings, they know how to push each other's buttons, so fighting is bound to happen. Now, Eric is talking to Jenny and Jenny's talking to Eric and as they're talking they hear screaming and not your normal like ha screaming from the movie scaring people but like screaming that we have to get out of here because something bad's going down and Eric looks to Jenny and Jenny looks to Eric and they're like oh no not again here we go what's going on so they run back into the theater and see that there's a giant wavern coming after them. And so they have to escape. They get out. Um, Mark and Ava don't go with them because the wavern had taken them, I think. Because... And them being from Jenny's hometown, Eric's like, wait, wait, wait. Where do we go? How can we hide from this thing? And Jenny goes, well, I know a place. Come and follow me. And then they end up in this old abandoned antique shop. And Eric's like, are you sure no one's going to come in here? How won't it find us? And Jenny's kind of distracted because she starts getting like a pooling feeling, like something telling her to come, come, come this way, child. So she follows this feeling, and she sees this strange bottle. And if you ever seen, like, wacky-looking perfume bottles, or, like, the bottles that normally witches and stuff use, then you know what kind of the bottle is supposed to look like. But she gets pulled towards this bottle, and she picks it up. And that's when, surprise, they hear screaming. And not like your normal, ah, screaming, but, like, an attack scream. This wavering had found them and the whole antique shop was shaking because of its deadly scream. So they again have to book it out of the antique shop and Jenny absent-mindedly brings the bottle with them. And so starts another one of their adventures. They realize that Mark and Ava have been kidnapped but they have no idea who kidnapped them and why or want the, or what they want out of kidnapping Mark and Ava. So this strictly becomes Eric and Jenny's adventure with Ava being able to, when she's asleep or unconscious, being able to see and tap into where Mark and Ava are, which is actually a pretty cool little feature. We get snippets of what's going on and like the danger they're actually in. So, I do know who kidnapped them. I don't know the why yet because like I said, it's been a long time since I've read the books. And I read a lot of books, so it's hard for me to remember every single detail of every single story I've read. So yeah. I can tell you who kidnapped them, but I'm not going to because that'd be a big spoiler for you guys and I'm not going to do that because I know how I feel when people spoil books. Spoil movies, spoil shows, good on you, I'm probably still going to watch them. You spoil a book, what's the point in reading it? So I'm not going to do that to you guys. That's why I try to just give you a quick... uh little peek at the first chapter because that's the first chapter it doesn't really spoil anything mainly it's just to give a little example of what you're in for if you do decide to read the books so them getting attacked by the wavern starts this adventure to not only get ava's item like eric has but to save their two damsel in distress 
and gentlemen in distresses siblings and they meet a few friends like it said on the back of the book on the way but you'll have to read to figure out who those friends are and what they can do in this scenario I most certainly I'm enjoying the flow of spring and the writing of spring a lot better than I did in winter because honestly winter ended very anticlimactic-y and they're in the middle of this huge fight and they're sitting there having a hugging like love fest and I'm like this is not the time for this you are in the middle of the battle at the end of the book stop it you have you're it's not a good time to be having a love fest right now stop that's not really a spoiler, but just saying, not the time for lovey-dovey talk. But yeah, I thought the ending in winter was very anticlimactic, and I get why it was anticlimactic, because once again, there are four books in the series, so it's gotta leave some stuff open, but I feel like it could have been gone about better than it was to be less anticlimactic because I was like all pumped and ready for this huge final showdown and like it was like wah 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 and I'm like it just I'm not that far yet not that far in spring but so far the writing is a lot less chunky and a lot less um speedy which it being a lot less chunky is nice in terms of actual, like, writing and not just story. But the flow in this, you can start to see the growth that I was talking about in the other video. <laughs> because it's nice and it's a lot more balanced. It's still not perfect, but it's a lot better. And I'm finding myself really enjoying this story a lot more than I did the first read-through. Because... For some reason, I felt like I kind of sped through spring, and I am enjoying it a lot more now because I'm making myself take more time with it because I don't have to rush through it because it is my book, and hopefully it'll be the same with summer because I had to speed through summer because that was actually a library book. I don't know why I sped through, I don't know why in spring. I sped right through it the first time because it was my book then too, but now that I'm taking my time with it, and now that I went back and actually re-read re Winter, I can certainly see the growth that I talked about in this book. It's a lot better with its flow, and I'm enjoying it a lot so far. Um... So far, nothing particularly of note has happened, except for Mark and Ava being kidnapped, which I was kind of prepared for because it's on the back of the book. And I won't say that it's my favorite book so far, but I still have two more to read. So, Summer was my favorite book, but it's my second read through, so that might change. And... So far, I would say that spring is definitely a lot more enjoyable than I found winter. Winter is still enjoyable, but the ending for me and the, like, chunky writing in it that I noticed a lot more on this read-through than I did the first one, it was just kind of a put-off for me, but that's kind of being fixed in spring, which is nice. And... I'll get to summer when I get there, and I'll do a review for that one, too. And same for autumn. But you can't kind of talk about one book without talking about the others, because they kind of click and connect. So, that's my thoughts on spring so far. Um, if you guys want to get it, once again, I think you can look on Amazon or eBay. I'm not quite sure, but hope you guys enjoyed. As always, if you did enjoy, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell down below to stay up to date on future videos. Hope to see you next time. Bye, guys.